This episode of Shadowversity is brought to you by my stupendous, awesome, LEGENDARY supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to support Shadowversity on Patreon, visit patreon.com forward slash Shadowversity. Shadowversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and it's time I clear up some misconceptions about the catapult. First of all, when people hear the word catapult, they generally think of what's more commonly understood as a mangonel or onagar. And I'm pretty sure I'm butchering the pronunciations as I usually do. But what we need to understand is that the word catapult actually is a more umbrella term that also encompasses trebuchets and ballista. The word itself has Greek origin, specifically in two words. The first word being kata, which means downwards, and palo, which means to toss or hurl. And the most early devices that were identified as catapults actually have a bit more in common with what you would understand as a ballista. If you don't know what a ballista is, it's basically a giant crossbow, but instead of using the tension from the limbs, it uses the tension from twisted ropes or sinews. And indeed, catapult is even more of an umbrella term because we still use it in the modern day to refer to something that launches something else. For instance, the catapults on aircraft carriers that help launch fighter jets. So that's the first misconception. Catapult, it's more of an umbrella term, and if you're wanting to refer to what people more commonly understand as a catapult in normal language, that is actually what is called an onager. Some might assume it's a mangonel, and the term mangonel is a bit of a confusing one as well because I have heard it applied to what you would identify as an onager, but also as sometimes a mangonel has been referred to a traction trebuchet, which is like a trebuchet but it's used with humans pulling ropes on the counter end rather than a fixed weight. It does seem when the word mangonel arises in medieval references, they're referring to traction trebuchets, but on, in common language today, a mangonel is more often identified as an onager. But because a traction trebuchet is defined as a traction trebuchet, it would be too confusing to try and tell people, no, no, you, need, you should refer to that as a mangonel, and the mangonels that people think of when they refer to mangonels should be referred to onagers. So for the purpose of this video going forward, I'm just going to refer to what people classically think of as a catapult, as a mangonel, and a traction trebuchet can remain as a traction trebuchet. The first thing that needs to be understood about the mangonel is that this type of catapult catapult was far more rare in the medieval period than not. When projectile devices needed to be used, it was predominantly trebuchets, not mangonels. Though they were used on occasion, they just weren't that common. The next big misconception about the mangonel is the size of projectile that they threw and what it was used for. Thanks to video games like Age of Empires and whatnot, people generally look at the mangonel as a siege weapon designed to bombard castle walls with the intent to destroy them. No, the size of projectile that the mangonel can effectively launch is not large enough to threaten castle walls. It'll threaten people, absolutely, not castle walls. This is not a device that is capable of destroying castles. There seems to be a mechanical limitation with the mangonel system. You can only get so much tension power out of this rope twisting system. And to launch boulders far enough and of the size to actually threaten castle walls, it simply doesn't have the power to do that. Could you ramp up the size of a mangonel to give it enough power to actually launch a large enough projectile to threaten a castle? Well, the square cube law isn't our friend in this regard. A boulder twice the size of what a mangonel can usually launch actually has eight times the volume and weight. And simply doubling up the system to double up the power doesn't mean it's an even conversion because you're now trying to launch something that's eight times heavier. No, a much better system to launch large projectiles is a system that actually works off the same weight. Now, a trebuchet is a cantilever system in which it uses gravity to store energy and then converts that into kinetic energy. And the advantage in this is that you just have to add additional counterweight to get more power in it, and you don't have to try and get more power out of a rope tension system. So increasing the size on a trebuchet actually increases its power at a more proportional and even rate to the size of projectile that you want to launch. This means that the more standard size of mangonel is actually much smaller than is often depicted in video 
video games and such. Now, it does seem like there were some decently sized mangonels in history, and some recreations have been made and put to the test, and it seems like they can work okay-ish. They can launch a projectile far enough, but not nearly as far as a full-fledged trebuchet. And it also seems like the smaller scale mangonels can actually launch same size projectiles at an equivalent distance to the larger ones, and it's all again because of this square cube law and the amount of energy you're able to get out of this rope tension system. So yes, the standard size mangonel, far smaller than many people assume, and not effective at destroying castle walls. And the other side to this is that even most tribuches aren't very good at destroying castle walls. Now, the largest of trebuchets, like, say, Warwolf, the biggest trebuchet in recorded history that was ever built, well, that could do some serious damage. But most trebuchets were nowhere near as big as Warwolf. At best, the standard trebuchet would be able to knock down some of the merlons on the crenellations atop the castle wall, which, of course, gives the defenders less cover to protect themselves from assaulting arrow fire. And then, of course, the projectiles from the standard trebuchets can be used to try and hit the defenders on the wall as well. But destroying castle walls have far more issues with it than people think. Uh, oftentimes in movies, video games, you just destroy the castle wall and then you can run in and take over the castle. That's not actually the case. If you were to bombard a castle wall, so much so to the point that you could have it collapse, there's still rubble in the way. There's still a very large barrier preventing you from getting inside. Destroying castle walls does not mean overtaking a castle. Not at all. In 1408, English forces under the command of the future King Henry V laid siege to Harlech Castle, and they bombarded it with cannons. This destroyed the south and east parts of the outer walls. Yet it only fell when it ran out of supplies and many of its defenders had died of starvation in February of 1409. So clearly, destroying a castle wall didn't mean you could take it over. And the other part to this, if you actually wanted to keep the castle once you took it over, meant you probably didn't want to destroy it in the process. Castles are very useful and expensive to build, so the employment of bombardment from catapult systems such as trebuchets would be a very carefully considered action. And the smaller types of catapults, such as mangonels and such, are completely incapable of damaging castles. So what were mangonels and onagars predominantly used for then? Well, from what I've been able to figure out from my study, they are more effectively employed against soldiers and infantry. Doesn't matter what armor you're wearing, a large rock half the size of your head. Now, I'm not talking boulders from what tribuches can actually fire. Mangonels often f are able to shoot rocks about half the size of a human head to the size of a human head. Now, against a person, doesn't matter what armor you're wearing, that's going to hurt slash, you know, kill you. And using them on battlefields and launching rocks into the infantry lines of your enemy, there's a very high chance you're going to hit someone and it's going to be an instant kill. And in regards to sieges, I can see them being employed against the defenders atop the castle walls, just not used against the castle itself with the intent to destroy the castle. So the video games that show mangonels being used to destroy castles and launching these really big boulders and stuff like that, completely incorrect. And lastly, I want to address a very anachronistic type of design of catapult, which is often depicted in a similar design to a mangonel, but it has this large kind of bow attached to it, like it's a real oversized crossbow attached to what people commonly understand as a catapult, which of course we talked about is a mangonel. This type of catapult, which is called a Petraria arcatinus, is from what most scholars have been able to deduce a complete fabrication. There are no known artifacts of this weapon in existence. There are also no verified drawings or descriptions from a reliable source from the medieval period. There have been attempts to build a working Petraria Arcatinus based on an Onagar slash Mangonel bow combination, but there's kind of a contradiction in logic with the Petraria Arcatinus, which in my mind might explain the reason why this type of catapult never actually existed historically. They're essentially trying to increase the power out of a Mangonel trebuchet by adding a bow to it, and thereby they can increase the size of projectiles it can shoot, yet there is still a limit 
limitation thanks to the square cube law in this system, something that is overcome so easily with the tribute system as I explained before. And separate to that, mangonels have an inherent weakness anyway due to the fact that they're getting their power from rope or sinew tension. And it's the fact that when these ropes or sinews get wet, you've basically stuffed your siege weapon. Rope and sinew lose their tensile strength when wet, and it doesn't return in full once they dry. This limitation does not exist with tribuches. And the last logical inconsistency that undermines the creation of the Petraria Arcatinus is the fact that they're trying to achieve a function, being able to launch large projectiles with more power, that they already had, which was a tribuche, and the tribuche did it better. So why make this convoluted Frankenstein catapult thingy if it's just going to achieve something you already have and that can do it better. There's no point in doing it. And then you don't have to deal with the inherent weaknesses of using ropes and sinews for tension. This then leads us to a complementary conclusion, which we are able to draw from the fact that there's no artifacts of this weapon in existence and no verified drawings or descriptions from a reliable source, that this type of catapult is anachronistic and doesn't exist, which is a bit frustrating because Many replicas have been made, and it also appears in modern artwork depicting the medieval period as well. It is historically inaccurate, and we should stop. This thing is a load of bull. And there we have it. This has been the truth about the catapult. Being able to debunk the misconceptions, but also share in what contexts, uh, specifically tribuches and mangonels, were more often used. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed, and I hope to see you again. Until that time, yeah.